So making money on investments is great. The downside is paying taxes. And as long as I've been in business, one of the challenges for my clients has been to, you know, to get the best after tax return, oftentimes is having a good strategy in place. 1031 exchanges have been one of the tools, but in my experience, they're very complicated and most customers really aren't satisfied. They're glad they save money in taxes, but the 1031 exchange causes them so much limitations, they end up not being happy with the investment they get. There's another tool called DSTs, and I really was excited to meet Lyndon Gray at the recent LA Real Estate Investors Club to talk about that. Lyndon, welcome to, to our uh, video today. Thanks, Bill. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. So let's just jump into it. You're a, an investment advisor, so so your role is you can help people through that transition of selling the property to avoid taxes and then maybe put it into something else using a tool called a DST. Now, I do know it stands for Delaware Statutory Trust. Sounds fancy. What does that really mean? Basically, it's what Congress came up with in 2004. It's under the IRS Revenue Code 2004-86. And the DST, look at the DST kind of like as an IRA rollover for real estate. Uh, the example I like to uh, make is when someone works at a company for 20 years, IBM, Disney, Fox, or whatever, and they retire, they have a 401k that they've built up over the years. They can then go to their HR and say, you know what, send that money to my bank account. If they did that, that's a major taxable event. But if they say, no, don't send it to my bank account, I'm going to go to my brokerage firm and open an IRA rollover, then they can say to their HR, here's the account number, roll those dollars, a million dollars over 20 years in their 401k, roll that money into my IRA rollover. That re re basically allows for the tax deferral to continue. And now you can take that IRA rollover and buy different stocks, different mutual funds, and, and continue to grow wealth. Same thing with the DST. The DST 1031 is the analogous to the IRA rollover. You have a low cost basis piece of real estate that you bought 20 years ago for 200,000. Now it's worth 2 million. Um, if you just sold that and escrow close and that money went to your bank account, bam, almost 40 cents on the dollar is taxable, especially in a high tax state like California. Then you have the federal tax, then you have the 3.8 Medicare, Obamacare tax, and then you have some other small taxes. So it adds up. So if you say, by the way, don't send that money to my bank account, I have a DST, I'm going to uh, utilize a DST 1031, and I'm going to basically select three or four portfolios to go into. Amazon Distribution Center, NetLease Portfolio, Self Storage, et cetera. Then once escrow closes, those monies then go into those portfolios, bypassing the tax man. You get monthly dividends and cash flow. And you go on a percentage of those portfolios, all the while satisfying the exchange requirements and keeping your 1031 alive. And so the biggest challenge as a real estate broker, when I've had customers sell an investment property and uh, try to, you know, try to avoid the taxes by using a 1031, is they have a limited window to find property. Uh, and 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 what I heard Grant Cardone say this once, and I realized, well, that was that was my experience, which is every customer would have to identify three properties. They would pick one they loved, they found another one they kind of liked, and they had to identify three, so they they figured one they didn't like, and the one they loved, they ended up not buying because they discovered something during the due diligence, during the inspections, and now the choices were one they kind of liked, the one they didn't really like, and and it just in my experience as an agent. 90% of the time, the customer ends up on the buy side, they're selling a property and they're buying something else on the buy side with something they don't like. Now you, this program solves that issue. It gives the tax advantage, but it gives them the opportunity to buy investments that they might like more. Do they have a chance to shop for those before they decide to sell the property? Meaning you, know, you listed off a couple of different asset classes. If I had a, a property that I was thinking of selling, could I look at those asset classes and, and decide on which portfolio I wanted now. And that way, when I sell six months from now, I can put that money there. Is that an, op an option? Indeed. So these portfolios are already set. They've been vetted. They've been put into place. Um, and they're, it's like a restaurant menu. You have the steak, the fish, the vegetarian, uh, vegeta veget vegetation, vegetation, uh, vegan, 
the vegan. There Don't forget go. the vegan. The vegan option. <laughs> so um, the first is take the vegan option. And basically, you communicate with me that you have this property being sold. And you say, what, are, what options do you have in the DSD world? And I say, oh, okay, I have this one, this one, this one. This one is paying three and a half. This one is paying five. This one has some LTV loan to value of 40, 45. Just in case you have a, uh, a debt on your exchange, you need to satisfy that. Um, and so they're in place. We can then go over those options and see which one you like best. And then you have some comfort knowing that these options are available. Um, there is a finite equity amount in each portfolio. Could be 60 million, could be 100 million. And we will try to gauge that situation based on, are you an escrow? Are you, have you listed already? Do you have an offer? And I would certain, certainly say, well, this portfolio only has 10 million left in equity. By the time you close escrow, it would be gone. So let's look at this other portfolio. It has 100 million in equity. Like I have a student housing portfolio now that has 125 million in equity. It's a $250 million uh, portfolio. So most, more than likely that portfolio will still have some equity available by the time you close escrow and so on and so forth. So certainly we can do some preliminary uh, discussions and uh, look at different options that are out there in the marketplace, even before you decide to list. Now, even though I, I'm, I'm pretty knowledgeable on these things and I feel pretty competent, I don't know that as a broker, I would want to get into those details discussing both the tax process of the DST or really get into describing the portfolio options. Is that something you can help with? Indeed. Indeed. I tell the agents, by all means, give me a call. I I, I can't tell you how many times. I'm leaving a, a meeting or or lunch or whatever, and I get a frantic call from an agent. Oh my, my my client's uh, 1031 just fell out of escrow. The bank decided not to lend. We're in the 40th day of a 45 day window. What can you do? What portfolios do you have? And I'm able to save that portfolio, that transaction. I have an Amazon distribution center. I have a multifamily portfolio with three properties and three states, et cetera. So certainly uh, that's something I, 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 I enjoy doing and educating the clients. And, um, and on a monthly basis, um, some of the companies host a lunch and learn uh, at different areas around the, the Southern California market, such as um, Beverly Hills, uh, Pasadena, uh, the Capitol Grill in, in, in Orange County, Costa Mesa, Nice. And in La Jolla at the Flemings. So based on where their clients are, they can uh, come into one of those meetings and have a, a nice presentation, nice lunch, and learn more about uh, about about the DST. So definitely. I think I turned your video off by accident there. Um, I sort of clicking around trying to get ready for the next part. No problem. So if you put your video back on there. Great. Um, great. Well, look, all that sounds interesting. And I appreciate having met you. Uh, I um, I go to the uh, Los Angeles County Real Estate Investor Association monthly. You're a vendor there as well. So if somebody wants to come meet you, do you go there regularly? Do you plan to be there this coming month? Yeah, I plan to definitely use that uh, expo. It's close. It's a nice, small uh, setting. It's not the big convention center type right. of expo. So yeah. it's, um, it's a good way to engage the community. Yeah. And let them know these options are there. And um, and for agents, it certainly is a tool in their toolkit that mm -hmm. they can utilize to overcome the objective or the objection, I should say. I don't want to sell because of taxes. They hear that all the time. Yeah. Uh, clients, once they are aware that this option is is there and it's a viable option, nine times out of ten, the client, the agent really increases their chances of gaining a listing, which in which before was basically dead money. Mm -hmm. I have a great example of this. I did a talk at a at a Inglewood Association uh, breakfast um, one one morning. And then one of the agents pulled me aside and said, geez, I, I love what you had to say. I'd love you to speak to this client of mine because he's owned this property for 20, 25 years. I've been saying it's a good time to sell, et cetera. And he didn't want to hear it because he's like, what am I going to do with that mill and a half? Just go in the bank and get whacked with taxes. So I'd rather just sit on this asset. 
So I engaged with that client. We exchanged emails. We had several conversations. And sure, sure enough, uh, that agent got that list in. The asset sold right there on 64th and Crenshaw, seven unit for about 141425. And then we split that up in four different portfolios. Fast forward, COVID impact and so on, the client sailed through that no problem. Uh, his two older daughters realized what a great thing they, his, their dad was experiencing. They themselves wanted to list their properties. So the agent got those two additional listings. Nice. And then we moved those dollars into, to, into other portfolios in the DST world. So nice. that, was, that was three properties, basically dead money, not right. looking to move one bit. And this agent got three good listings out of that uh, in the span of a year and a half or two. Um, so you certainly um, agents knowing this vehicle don't have to be an expert in it. Just know that it's there. And, uh, and then you reach out to me and we can get the ball rolling. You know, yeah, and I, I see, I've experienced that so many times that customers have money tied up in a property. Uh, it's just easier to sit on it. Uh, and oftentimes the, the the property has grown so much that the, the debt's very low. Uh, even when rates were lower, they didn't refinance to leverage it uh, again uh, to maybe reposition some of the equity. And now they're sitting on equity and they'll say, well, look, I, I'm getting, you know, a positive return, what else can I do with it? And the answer is perhaps find some, at least compare some alternatives and see if that doesn't work for you. So Linda, I appreciate, I'll meet you uh, again next month. It's the second Thursday of the month at the Laric event. But in the meantime, if somebody wanted to get together with you and talk about DSTs, whether they're a broker or a consumer looking to take advantage of it, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Directly, phone number is 310-283-4147. Uh, email. L Gray, G R E Y, at W I S direct.com. And if you'd like to attend those lunch and learns, email me, call me, and say, Yes, I'd like to attend either personally or bring a client. Um, and, and there's space, just let me know and I'll reserve a space for you at the lunch and learns. Fantastic. Well, Linda, I really appreciate getting a chance to talk more in depth with you. It's been nice meeting you and working with you, and look forward to doing some DST work with you going forward. Sounds good. Thanks, Thanks for so the much. time. Thanks for your interest, Mr. Gross. Appreciate it. Thank you.